Hey, welcome to Garden Sound 365. This is the show where I write music every day for a year. Today I'm messing with some new lighting. We got soft light right here, soft light right here, bright light right here. Definitely taking a note out of uh, Philip DeFranco's book and borrowing his, uh, his lighting setup at least. So yeah, Phil, if you're watching, which you're probably not, but if you are, um, how's it going, man? Thanks for letting me borrow your lighting. <laughs> Our sets are totally different because I'm in a studio and you're in your office, but you know, it's, it's uh, something I looked at for about four years and then I was like, you know what, I can do the same thing and it would probably improve my show too, so here we are. I want to give a shout out to everybody for being so, for being such a good audience. I want to give a shout out to you all for being such a good audience. I was a little bit nervous yesterday when I put out my video thinking to myself, hmm, kind of worried these people won't get my humor. I don't know why I worried about that. You guys are a great audience, and you jumped right in there and thought it was funny, so perfect. So I'm going to put out some more videos like that of me being a little bit outrageous and funny. So today we're going to be talking about grooves. Grooves in Ableton Live, what are they? What can you use them for? I'm going to build a song first, and when we get to the point where I'm starting to use a groove in the song, like on some drums, I'm going to pull the camera in, and I'm going to say, hey, here's a groove, here's what it does, and then that song I'm working on, I'll finish out, we'll do a time lapse, and that'll be today's music. Tomorrow is going to be a great episode. I'm doing a recomposed episode on Starboy by Daft Punk and The Weeknd. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do on Thursday. I might try to do another DIY video like I did last Thursday. Um, that seemed to go over pretty well. Friday, of course, is our fan-submitted coffee time. If you haven't done so already, please take a moment to go to this pinned post on my Facebook page, which is just www.facebook.com slash garden sound and make your post for your least favorite song of 2016 and on Friday when we have fan coffee time I'll review that song in my coffee time format and you'll get to see your name on the screen and that kind of thing so it's kind of fun um, we've done it twice in a row it was really popular and I'm looking forward to three times I'm learning a lot of stuff with these videos that I never thought I would learn I'm learning about lighting and all sorts of stuff like video editing and how to how to film with the camera properly. Like like I said earlier, we're on manual mode now. We're not doing any any of that um, automatic focus and, and stuff. So learning all kinds of stuff I never thought I would learn with this project. So that's just some encouragement to those of you who are thinking about starting a project. It's not just about that project. You're gonna learn stuff doing things. You know, just by doing, you're gonna learn so many things that you didn't even think about. I'm rambling on and talking too much, so I'm going to get started on today's beat, and you'll catch up with me once I get to some grooves. Alright everybody, welcome back. So I've created a really basic beat here. Um, it just flows between three chords, all parallel. Um, I've got four tracks, okay? Starting from the top, we've got VST Default, VST Contact, Bass, and Piano Slash Vox. Uh, they sound like this. The first two are just simple drum tracks. That is a drum track from Ableton's default collections of drums. And I've included another drum track that is actually contact drums. And the reason I did that is because I wanted you to see the difference between adding a groove to a plug-in like contact and adding a groove to a default drum like Ableton for those of you who might not have the luxury or privilege of owning contact like I do. This is contact. That's just a default drum lab contact. I didn't really do any tuning or anything to the drums, um, so I really just wanted to sound stock and default like it is. Next we've got um, a bass track, right? So just some simple electric bass from one of my synthesizers over here in the rack. It's just an acoustic bass. not that great but it works so the next thing we have is uh, just some piano slash vocal um, it's a it's a poly um, it's a it's a split right so it's part of it's this ooh ah kind of vocals and the other parts just a standard dance piano it sounds like this I was feeling kind of n64 today so that probably sounds like a video game from the 90s Anyway, all together with the default drums, it sounds like this. Just a really 
really chilled out kind of groove. All right, let's look at what happens when we start to apply groove to the drum track. So to apply groove to a MIDI track, you actually have to select the clip. So what I'm gonna do is consolidate both of these tracks into one clip so we can apply a groove globally. So here's my MIDI clip, and I've got a little bit of velocity animation in here, or automation, so you can see um, at the second part where the drums start to get a little bit more active, where you have if you're a cross sticker. Listen. Right. It's a little bit different than the very beginning where it's just a straight eighth note. Right. So, there's a section down here, and I'm going to zoom in as I'm doing this, at the bottom left that says Groove. All right. And if you click on this hot swap button, it pulls up a window, and I'm going to minimize this just a bit, that pulls open your Groove library. Okay. So, Swing and Groove out of the core library are right here. You've got Hip Hop, Latin Percussion, Logic, MPC off of the bat, just to name a few. Now, anybody who has Live Suite is going to have all these. You might have less, but you're not going to have any more than this when you first open the program. So let's take a look at my favorite section, which is MPC. The MPC is the um, synthesizer that was made by Akai. Um, they're still making versions for desktop and, and thinner models that rely on software. But back in the day, they used to be standalone synthesizers, and they were very popular in the late 80s and 90s. Well known for their swing settings, um, particularly popular in hip-hop tracks. So there's 8 swing. It gives you an example there. And as we start to click down this list, the number is increasing, right? Some from 50 to 64, etc. That's the percentage of swing that you're getting in the groove. And the more extreme the number is, like closer to 100, the more extreme the swing is going to be. So straight is like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Da, 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 da. The closer you get to a triplet is more swing, right? So bum ba dum ba dum ba bum ba dum ba ba bum. Jazz, very common to have swing in jazz, and that's what grooves are. They're not just swing, but that's what grooves do. They introduce a little bit more of a humanistic, or a, they humanize your drum beats a bit. So let's apply a swing groove. Okay, so here's an eighth note swing aggressive. You can really hear a difference in that one. Listen. Compared to no groove. Big difference. So maybe we should go with an eighth note swing, but not as aggressive. Let's start with 50 and try that. Let's go up a little bit. How about 63? Too much. How about 60? Or sorry, 55. Too much. How about 53? I like that. Now our drums sound a bit more human. So now, once we've got our groove selected, what we want to do is click the commit button right below that. A lot of people miss this step. Now what that does is it swings out these notes just a teeny bit. Do you see how they're not all centered up anymore? Beforehand, let me click Control Z, everything's lined up properly. Now let me click Commit again and watch how it sort of skews the, skews the notes a little bit. Boom. So check it out. It takes your MIDI data and just makes it a little bit off. And the reason for that is because MIDI is perfect. All the notes are going to fall exactly where you tell them to because computers don't make mistakes. But, when a human drummer is on the drums, no matter how good the drummer is, they're going to be just slightly off because we're all made of organic tissues and we don't function like ones and zeros. So why should your drums sound like that? Here's the same thing, and we're going to apply the same groove to the contact drums, just so you can hear the difference between the two. That's no groove. And here's with our 8th swing 53 that we liked from the last one. Cool. 
Now, if we commit it, just like we did with the last track, it's gonna skew those notes just a teeny bit, and now everything's been normalized, finalized, and here is our swung out drums from Contact. Now, let's hear that with the full track. First with just the standard drums, and then with Contact. Alright, now with contact. Honestly, I like the stock drums better than contact in this particular example. So that is swing. Now there's multiple types of grooves, and I want to go ahead and highlight a groove that I found yesterday on Reddit. Now this is a guy who extracted all of the grooves, this is a user from Reddit, extracted all of the grooves from all of Radiohead's albums. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put one in here from In Rainbows because that's my personal favorite Radiohead album. Um, and we're gonna put in, let's see here, House of Cards. What I'm gonna do just to make sure that I, that I uncommit my last groove, is I'm gonna select everything. Um, actually, we're looking at the wrong track here, sorry guys. I'm gonna select all, and then to make the notes go back to how they were, I'm gonna use Control and U. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna quantize everything and snap everything back into the grid. So once again, we are ungrooved. We're back to just standard MIDI, everything perfect. Here, it's, here it is, right here. Very square. In fact, it doesn't sound natural anymore now that we've played with the groove enough. So I'm gonna go back to groove, and I'm going to grab the one from House of Cards. This is Radiohead's groove from House of Cards. And check this out. It sounds drastically different. And this groove, again, let me turn it off. I'll turn on the metronome so you can hear it. All right, now let me put on the radio head groove. Now let me put on a couple of different ones here. I like House of Cards the best. Cool. Alright, so we've got our groove applied. Here's what it sounds like with the full track. That's grooves. All right, everybody. Well, that's it for me today. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this track out and do a little time lapse for you. So don't forget to click here if you wanna hear today's song and see the time lapse. And click here if you wanna see yesterday's episode, which was kinda of silly, but still accurate. Uh, click here if you'd like to subscribe and click here if you wanna support me on Patreon. But as always, my name is Garden Sound. Fresh Beats, right here. Click on it, tap on it. See you tomorrow.